Anyway, the Shana Toba means uh, the Shana is the transformation. So when we enter the new year, we have to have the new transformation in us. So it is very important to recognize what is the new thing in your life in this moment. Uh, upon what you received as a light in this moment, it governs, it reigns all your days in next year. So it is so important moment that you receive the light newly as uh, the new year, then we can enter the new year of the time. Okay? So let's praise our God together with this realm. Okay? The first day of the uh, year is called Rosh Hashanah. And uh, on Rosh Hashanah, we eat uh, apple and honey. Uh, apple is called um, tapwak. Tapwak means uh, spirit. Uh, this is a fruit. And honey is um, the meaning of a sweet, right? So uh, the meaning of uh, we dip, uh, we, we we, we take the apple to dip into the sweat means your ear will be sweet. So that's why we uh, attach the umetuka after the shana toba. So we call it shana toba umetuka. Okay? Let's call it once again. Shana toba umetuka. Toba umetuka. This means you, your new year will be sweet. Okay? Let's bless each other. As I said, uh, we are entering New Year now. So Autumn Feast is like this. So tomorrow will be the Rosh Hashanah. The exact time is started from the today evening. So today evening will be the first day of the Tishuri month, which is the first uh, the day of the New Year. So it's called Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpet. And uh, we keep the... We keep the Sorry, we keep the 10 days uh, until the Yom Kippur. So God has given this time for the great atonement. So we have to, uh, we have to pray for our sins as a repentance day. Uh, so it, is, uh, it has been from the first day of the Elul and it lasted until the Yom Kippur for the 40 days. So this is the day of uh, the atonement. This is the period of atonement. So with these days, we can go into the, uh, the deeper the relationship with our God. And then we enter the Sukkot. So, uh, and then uh, the seventh day of the, the period of the Sukkot is called the Hoshanna Lava. And the eighth day will be Shemini Yajaret and Shemkat Torah. So please remember this feast, which are the appointed time of the God. So when we uh, face this feast with the exact knowledge of the time, then we can participate in the grace of God when our God planned for us to pour out. Okay, let's start with uh, uh, today's Torah portion. Today's Torah portion is Nitzabim. Uh, ni, uh, nitzabim. Uh, please repeat after me. Nitzabim. Uh, nitzabim means uh, stand firm. Uh, nitzabim is different from the meaning of Ahmad. Ahmad is just stand. But Nitzabim is stand Form, stand form. It is important to make an emphasis on the form. Okay, if you do not stand form, you can't walk, right? Have you seen many scenes in the soccer game? If they do not stand form, they can't uh, shoot the ball very uh, quickly and strongly. Uh, standing form is very very important. If our babies are grown up, the first step to let them, uh, let them know is standing, right? And then they can start work. Ben, do you remember when uh, Minha was just, uh, starting to walk? She stood first and she started working. So if we 
do not stand firm, we cannot walk. That's why next Torah portion will be Vayalek. Vayalek will be the meaning of walking, walk. Um, when we uh, say about the stand form, we stand form, but our God stand form first. And when we walk, our God walk together. Mm. It is very important to understand the concept of our life. So standing form is the first the stage that we have to take. So let's see uh, today's verse. The Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 10. All of you are standing today in the presence of the Lord your God, your leaders and chief men, your elders and officers, and all the other men of Israel. And next. Next verse. 11. Together with your children and your wives, and the foreigners living in your camps who chop your wood and carry your water. So what these verses are saying is whole Israelis, whole nation of Israel. So today, uh, we're going to talk about Hayom. Hayom. Hayom is the day. Uh, it is interpreted as a today. This is yom. Yom is day, and ha is the. What is the the day? What is the hayom? Uh, do you remember this kind of verses? Our God has no conception of the time. So he was in the past, he is now present, and he will be in the future to come. So he, uh, he is not divided into the frame of the time. So our God only lives in Hayom. In Hayom. Uh, could you show us the Hebrew version? Uh, next verse. 12. You are standing here in order to enter into a covenant with the Lord your God, a covenant the Lord is making with you this day. This day is a Hayom. Can you see this one? Hayom. Okay. So, <clears throat> in this Torah portion, Hayom uh, repeats many times, the 13 times in this Torah portion. Uh, why Hayom is important? Uh, if we do not have the, the concept of the time, we do not understand how our God is leading us in this time. Uh, on Rosh Hashanah, as I said, Rosh Hashanah, uh, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah. So Rosh Hashanah means, this is Rosh, this is the head. Head of the ear. Okay, have the head of the ear. This is the beginning. As per the, the transparent of the, the Jewish uh, the tradition, it is said that on this day, the Tishri first, the first of Tishri. Do you remember what is the month of the Tishri? Right? The so Tishri is the seventh month in Jewish calendar. But actually, this is the day of the Adam and Eve are born. So that's why um, the time is started on this day, the time, the creation was, was started this day. But actually, uh, from the 25th to 
29th of Elul, before the Tishri month, it was started. So uh, from the 25th to the 29th, did it, take, it took the five days. And on the last day of the creation, the sixth day, Adam and Eve were born. So this is the time of the, the starting, the beginning. So that's why this is the day of head of the year. Head of the year. This is not. Why I'm talking about it? Our God planned the Hayom, Hayom from the beginning to the end. His time is in this range, from the beginning to the end. He was there, he was there in the past, he is now in the present, and he will be the end to come. So what does it mean? When our God created the world on this day, it was also the end of the day. His time frame has no limitation and no division. So that's why our journey is to returning back to the origin. That is the, the image of God. So our God made Adam and Eve as the, his image. And we are returning back to the God's image. That is our journey. So, on this day, what is said that there's uh, three books. The one book is for the complete evil. Complete evil. And second one, the another one is for the, the middle one. For middle one who is going. And last one is for the complete righteous man. Complete righteous man. Let's just see. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judge seat of Christ, so that each of you, us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Right? So, before the judgment seat of Christ, there will be end of the day, and there will be judgment seat of the Christ, and we will be judged. So this Hayom, okay, this Rosh Hashanah, as I said, on Rosh Hashanah, there's three books, evil, and the middle who is going, and righteous, righteous man. Um, still open, still open. So whom uh, do you belong to? Raymond, whom do you belong to? Past, which is evil, or the middle who is going, or the righteous? We are all in the middle. We are all in the middle. That's why we are alive, to be given the opportunity to accomplish the complete righteous. Complete righteous. So he is still opening three books. At the end of the day, he will be still opening the books for the three. And he was opening the books at the first time. So he still opened the three books for three parties. What we can do is the only way we can accomplish the righteousness is to get rid of, get rid of our evil tendency. Evil tendency. Evil incli inclination. That is, that is planted in the time when we were born. So our God is giving us the opportunity to recognize what is the time you are passing now. 
let's just see. Mm. Let's just see this verse. Uh, 29, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 12, okay. You are standing here in order to enter into a covenant. Into covenant. So do you remember what was the verses from the 10 to 11? So all the Israelites should stand firm. But why? Why? The purpose is that to, in order to enter into a covenant. Into a covenant. Could you show us the Hebrew version? You see, uh, the first word and second word, le abreka be brit. Le abreka, le abu, uh, abreka be brit. This is the meaning of enter into. But this is the root of this word, abar. Abar. Abar is the meaning of Hebrew. Do you remember what is the Hebrew meaning? The Hebrew means uh, come across. Come across. They come across the Jordan River, right? So this is the meaning of come across. Come across. But do you know um, uh, what is the meaning of Brit? This is covenant. Covenant. Let's recall your memories for the meaning of Hebrews. Okay? <laughs> Let's just start. <laughs> what was the, the meaning of a bet? House, right. And what is the meaning of resh? It's a head. And what is the meaning of yod? Is our God's hand. Um, and yod hey vav hey, in this the word of the yod hey vav hey, the yod is meaning of Father God. And what is the meaning of a tough? That is cross. But in this case, we can interpret like this. This is bar. Bar is son. Okay? And this is Yod, the Father God. Father God. And this is a tough, it's a cross. So we can understand this is cross of Son of God. Okay? Brit, the covenant, it is as it is the cross of Son of God. Cross of the Son of God. So how we can interpret that verses? You are standing here in order to enter into a covenant means you are, you are entering. You are come across. Cross of Son of God. It means when you are nailed on the cross with our Christ, then you can cross over. You can come across. Uh, let's see the next verse. To confirm you this day, this day is Hayum again, as his people, that he may be your God, as he promised you, and as he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and 14. I am making this covenant with its oath, not only with you, and then 15th. Who are standing here with us today? Today is Hayom, in the presence of the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here today. Hayom. So, how we can interpret it? Past. Past. Present. And future. This is all Hayom. This is all Hayom. 
So, the Hayyum was described in the first verses. And the Hayyum is now also described in this, the verse of future. Do you get it? Our standing here with us today in the presence of the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here today. What does it mean? There's somebody who will be joining this community and will be standing from Hayom. So, how we can interpret it? Uh, the past generation, the previous generation, and we are here, and next generation. So upon, upon the past generation, the previous generation, we are, we are defined. We are defined. You were born based on how your generations were, right? You were born in Africa. You were born in Pakistan depending on how your fathers were, and how you look like because of the appearance of your father and mother. Your previous generation made your past, and upon you, your next generation will be made. And it is the same principle that you can apply in your spiritual world. Upon your past, then your present is defined. Upon your present, your future will be made. Right? Uh, we can uh, shrink the range of the, the Hayom and we can enlarge as much as we can as our God's time. Um, why I'm talking about it? Because this abar, we, if we call it aber, aber, this is past. This is past. Sorry? Ah, aber, sorry. And you, if you say abera, this is a sin. This is a sin. So, your past is linked to sin. How about friendly? Can you confess what kinds of the past you passed through before? Our God still gives you the opportunity to rectify your destiny. Even if we commit a crime in the spiritual world or in the physical world. Our God still gives you the opportunity to rectify your destiny for the next generation. Next generation could be the principle of the generation to come. And in your life, there is still next generation you have to face. Pay attention, okay? It's, <laughs> it's not an easy one, Ben, okay? But uh, you should understand because this is, this is the really important time of Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. You have to take this message. Then this message will be working in your life to give you the new light. Every new knowledge, every new knowledge can enlighten you. Every new knowledge can give you new light. That is the starting point. That is the beginning point of your life again. Right, Shamuel? Really? Um, um, one time before, uh, someday before, sorry, in the past, the Samuel told me, uh, he really tried to find the real truth. And he said, he came to this church and he described, oh, the real truth is here. 
why you thought it and why you cried at that time. Because the new knowledge came into you. The new truth which you were in the secret in the heaven now is revealed to you. Right? Let's see the Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. 29, 29 and 29. The secret things belong to the Lord, our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever. What is saying that? The secret things. Um, let me erase it here. <clears throat> Seter. Seter is a secret. And what is the revealed? Revealed is gala. Reveal. The secret, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. Okay? That is called spirit. It is essence of the spirit. So if, uh, even if you are living, you do not have uh, the ability to take this secret by yourself at the first time. But what is saying that the things we build belong to us and to our children forever. What does it mean? Our God revealed our God let us reveal the things which were in the secret so it is it is important Samuel Samuel have been grown up in the the secret things belong to the Lord our God and then when he came to the, the knowledge of the Torah, the rebuild belonged to him. Do you understand what I mean? So, this is the, the essence. This is the essence, which is the, the nature of the spirit. So, our God planted all the secret things in the world. And we are grown up in this environment. So we do not catch any things in this realm. But as we are growing up, then there's something that we can get which can be revealed in your life. But the first, what you have to do is Leabarta Be Brit. You have to cross over the cross. The cross. What does it mean? You have to be nailed on the cross of the Son of God. That is the meaning of you kill your evil tendency. This is described very well in this Torah portion. Let's see. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 18. Verse 18. Our God wants us to stand firm at the first time in this Torah portion, right? So he said, the whole Israelites will be standing firm before the Lord, and if you uh, take the, not, uh, sorry, uh, in order to enter into the covenant, and then the one who even do not hear now will be participating in this covenant. That was our God's intention. And 18, 29, 18. Make sure there is no man or woman clan or tribe among you today whose heart turns away from the Lord our God to go and worship the gods of those nations. What does it mean? That's the evil tendency. This is the ego. There is other gods. 
other gods. Other gods means yourself. You can serve, you can worship money, your success, your business, your wealth, your properties. You can, you can turn away from the Lord to go and worship the gods of those nations. That's not real nations. In the spiritual world, there's a lot of the nations you can face which are derived from the, the principle of the physical realm. You can worship them, then you can turn away from the God. That is derived from evil tendency. Evil tendency. Because you perceive yourself as a body, not spirit, which is only visible things you believe. Then you have no no intention to enter into the covenant life. How you can keep your covenant life now? Do you read the Bible? Do you pray every day? Do you try to make sure your neighbors to be returned back to the origin, which is Kedem? Do you try to make your neighbors to return back to the image of God? How are you going to do now? And how you are dealing with that issues? That is the most important question that we have to make ourselves. Right? Rosh Hashanah, as I said, in this day, God opens the three books. Which one do you want to belong to? Our God still gives you the opportunity to return back. As I said, from the first day of Tishuri till the tenth of Tishuri, this is the period period of atonement. And on the, the tenth, of, uh, tenth of Tishuri, this is the day of atonement. Do you know why our God called you as a bride? Our God wants us to be with Him forever. So that's why 15th of Tishuri, it starts with the Feast of Scott. Uh, have you seen the sukkah? Sukkah. Sukkah is the tent uh, where you have to enter in. And there's nothing inside of there. Sukkah. Sukkah is just a tent. Like, um, have you seen the hupa? Right? The Raymond, when you get married, then you enter the hupa, right? So those things, they're like a tent. Why our God want us to enter into the tent? Where? Uh, there's nothing. Because we have to enter there as a spirit. Spirit is invisible. And when we became the real spirit, the complete righteous, which is belonging to the one of the books, then we can debuck with our Lord. Our Lord is waiting for us who who can become the complete righteous after passing by covenant. After passing by covenant. Do you have covenant? If you can say amen, we can enter the sukkah. We are our God and us. We will be living forever. Amen? This is so important, so, so important. So, from the, the first day of the Tishuri, we have to remember this is the last chance. This is the last chance to enter the tent of marriage. 
with our Lord. This is only one time in the year. And if you do not realize, if you do not recognize this knowledge on this day of Rosh Hashanah, how you can prepare these days? Right? This is so, so important. Yachel, um, sorry, not Yachev. <clears throat> Yet Jeff, uh, this is uh, origin from the Nitzabim, okay? Nitzabim is from Yet Jeff. Yet Jeff means stabilize, stabilize. As I said many times, we cannot get rid of our evil tendency. We are, we are born as we will receive. We over the sieve. So that's why we are automatically are inclined to take something to receive. But how you can deal with it? You have to stabilize. Stabilize. On Hayom, you have past, present, future. You are living three time frames. But how you are dealing with this time frame, John? You can, you can take it out. The evil tendency, it means you have to put your purpose of give in front line. That is the meaning of stabilize. And that is the meaning of stand firm. If you manage to stabilize the Hayom, which means based on the past, you can live in the present. Based on this present, you can live in the future. Do you understand what I mean? I know it's not an easy one, but try to understand it. It's so, so important. Um, so, <clears throat> um, so let's see, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 18, verse 18, when he takes the throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself on a scroll a copy of this law taken from that of the Levitical priest. Um, actually, we are now headed to the end of this Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is a Mishina. Mishina, Mishina is also uh, like uh, the copy of the Torah. And it's like a commentary of the Torah. How we have to make our life again. How we have to change and how we have to uh, transform our life again. Based on the knowledge of those things, we have to take Shana. We have to take the transformation in this new year. How? To the image of God. What is the image of God? The divinities. Do you remember what is the divinities? Hesed, Gevra, Tiferet, and and Nechak Hod Yesod, right? So, all the divinities, that should be your characteristics of your life. The image of God is not easy, but simple. But your evil tendency always blocks you and drag you back to the life of evilness. Try to understand. This is a Hayom. Hayom. You are living in Hayom. When you recognize this time frame, your day will be Hayom. Do you know, only the creature in this earth, only the human being recognize the time. Only human being recognize the time. 
Why Yahweh God gives us this, uh, the recognition of the time? Because do not focus on your physical life, and then you can be entangled to your past only. You are entangled to your past only. And based on what you have done in your past, you just define your life to be done. If you see your past only, but now, today, our God wants you to stand firm in order to enter into the covenant. Enter into the covenant, which means cross of the Son of God. Then you can leave Hayom. Okay? Let's pray. Let's pray. Um... This time, I want you to recall the lessons today. This is a really, really uh, important moment Then uh, we can enter into the covenant life. Without covenant life, we have no life. We have no uh, the life with our Lord. Based on the knowledge of this time, we can enter the time of the autumn feast. We can enter Rosh Hashanah, we can enter Yom Kippur, which is the day of atonement, and we can enter the Sukkot. And we can end up the feast with our Lord. Then we can start our life in the spirit again. Uh, let us pray this time. Let us pray. You just confess what you have done in the past. If there's something that you just passed through, if there's something that you just missed to confess before the Lord, now it is the time for the last chance to repent by yourself, by your mouth. Our God has given you lots of times, but if you miss that, Take this moment, take this chance in this moment to stand firm again before the Lord. Let's pray. Let's get it again. Let's get it Your grace, okay. We are sinner. We only took the evilness so far. But Lord, you led us in this moment, and you are giving us the one more chance, which is the last chance before the, the new year. Before we face the new time. Let us finish our sin, our evilness before you, so that we can turn back to your image that is planned from the kingdom, that is a final goal that we have to reach out. Lord, please give us your mercy and forgive us. Let's pray one more time. In this time, In this time, let's uh, determine. Let's determine your life. Let's decide our life before the Lord. We will take the authority of the heaven and kingdom as a son of God, as a one who will be living with the king forever. With this identity, we can decide our identity to be one who can dwell 
in the spiritual world, not focusing on my physical realm, my physical desires, my physical success, my physical money. Don't focus on your physical things in this time and next year, so that our God will lead you to the spiritual world and will lead you with His mercy and grace. If you agree with it, you just confess again, and you just repent again, you just decide yourself again. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we are waiting for your grace. But we want to make my, my decision to be with you in new time now. Lord, I'm entering into the new covenant. I'm entering the cross of the Son of God with your grace and mercy now. Lord, please lead us, please guide us. Please take it out, our weakness right now. Please take it out, our blindness, so that I can see you, I can see you, the glory and the mercy in heaven to be poured out to our life to live for the spiritual world from now on. Lord, thank you for giving us this secret and mercy. Lord, let me pay attention to your voice. Let me pay attention to your voice. Let me pay attention to your sounds of the trumpet to wake up our spirit so that I can leave you forever in your time as your bride. Lord, let us dwell in you and let, I want to let you come in and dwell in me so we can live together forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, let's have uh, apple and honey, okay? <laughs>